everyone. So we're back with Trevor again. He brought the Civic over today. He just put a built motor in it. He's gonna do some tuning and use the dyno. But so we're gonna uh, see how it works out with the front wheel drive along the hub station. All right guys, so Trevor got his car pulled in here. He just did a bunch of work to it and now we're setting him up on the hubs. Did a little deal to switch it from four lug to five lug. Hopefully it all works out, but don't plan on doing a bunch of four lug stuff. So no sense in buying a whole set of hubs, but I uh, just did a little four to five adapter over to the five lug adapters, but these ones actually are pretty decent. They got some meat in between each of the uh, mounts and they also center themselves and everything. So, uh, but otherwise Trevor's got a pretty cool build here. It's a what K? So this is a, uh, a K24 out of a CRV. Uh, it has a built bottom end, so we have uh, pistons and rods. Uh, we have a TSX head in it with upgraded valve train, valve springs, retainers, uh, stock cams, um, but uh, yeah, aftermarket valves. We got a full uh, Dietrichs fuel system. We got a Garrett GTX 3582. Full built. And um, yeah, 2200 cc injectors, E85. Did the uh, wastegate right off the housing and stuff, yeah. so that's pretty cool. Yeah, so we had a lot of issues with that manifold initially. It was just boost creeping. Yeah. Because it's like a 90 degree, like literally it just goes straight down. Yeah, so you need a lot of back pressure to start opening we the open, gate and So on the dyno, last time we had, we literally opened the wastegate with shop air and started the pull and it still made the same. Yeah, the gate was wide open the whole time and it was just, it overboosted yeah. to like 29 pounds or that's something. That's crazy. Like, uh, crazy. Overboost and wastegate prioritizing is very important on these builds, uh, all turbo builds. But this car is actually an all wheel drive build that he did. Uh, removed the drive shaft with the viscous coupler and everything to put it on the dyno so we can dyno it in front wheel drive and then he can throw everything back in and run it that way. So we're gonna go ahead and finish getting this thing mounted up on the hubs, start making some pulls. Mm -hmm. So it took us a few pulls to get this dialed in. We tried a ramp run, but the ramp comes in real heavy. Like when VTEC kicks in, it kind of kind of weird. So this car does want to, has a real slow rate of speed and then real fast once uh, VTEC comes in. So kind of figured out we ended up going ahead and going into a gear, a gear roll on and then um, using some load here, but coming in heavier up top where the VTEC's at. But something that's weird on this one is the car does not have a one-to-one -one gear ratio. So he's actually in third gear and then so we're having to use a 5.5 gear ratio to get the rpm set correctly on this one Like 615, 683, and then 674. He's working up on the boost a little bit, but he got a little bit fatter through here. So this car is really different having it on the dyno because the it comes in super hard when the VTEC comes in, boost starts rolling in, and it just kind of takes off right there. Uh, so we're trying to dial that in, but I'm just trying to uh, play with some settings and see what it does. We did a ramp run, like I said, but it loaded really hard when um, VTEC kicked in. It kind of like really took, brought it down. So we're just trying to uh, find some easy. Uh, some consistent pulls on this one. I'm also just playing with some settings in the dyno, just trying to learn. It's uh, part of Trevor's just playing with learning some tuning. He's actually been trying to find some of the uh, the knock settings too, and just looking at tables and some stuff he added to the car. It's a whole different combo now. Made seven oh eight and five ten. There we go, guys. Quick little video for you. They're tearing the car down. Going to get it out of here. Trevor, you figure you're probably about round on fuel. I mean, not really fuel pump, just maybe supply wire or something. Look over that. Yeah. Well, I have two big inline pumps ran with one relay. Yeah. Like, so. With questionable wiring going to it. So I need to, I just need to go back and fix that. it. Yeah. Yeah. Just, it's got all the fuel system you need. You're just finding where wiring and the amps from the relay and everything matters. So. Otherwise, 708, not too bad. A little bit more than it used to make at similar boost level or pretty close there. So um, he's going to go figure out a few things, and I'm sure we're, we'll be back to turn it up some more. And so we are back with Trevor. His Civic is on the dyno again, but he's got some uh, fuel pumps making some noise this time. And you can actually hear it when he pulls in. So added some uh, voltage to him, huh? Yeah, so the, before we had one of them on like an aftermarket relay, 
and then the another one on a stock relay but uh, basically they're the detorx 350 il pumps so they're big and they yeah they need they, a big wire they need a lot so uh, you yeah. can physically hear them now same pumps couldn't hear them at all last time now you could can hear them but just not like that not like, like that, now they're sure. like, yeah. wow like yeah. so yeah it's definitely definitely making a lot more so uh say we were just the voltage was dropping a little bit but i think because it was pulling from the same wire that the rest of the car is running off of on yeah. that stock fuel pump through a tiny wire so then as the car is needing more voltage for injectors coils everything else it's actually trailing Drawing off and down with the pump and yeah. killing the pump so he uh got those all turned up so he's going to try to turn the car up here today and make a little bit more power than we did last time we made just a little over 700 last time what was that about 26 pounds 26 yeah about 26 so we'll see what you where you want not to go with it today not bad dude this thing's it's making great. me thinking about building one i don't know though we'll see oh you need to <laughs> So he's worked his way back up to 675. It was pretty fat before because of where he had the fuel map uh, tuned in for the lower fuel pressure. Now with all the fuel pressure, it's fatter now. So starting to make progress on it. So on that pool, it was getting fat up top, so it was actually just killing it with too much fuel, and that's why you could hear it kind of breaking up up top. But uh, I actually gave Trevor the controller. He's been around enough. He's been learning it. I kind of figured out where the ramp runs happy. We're doing ramp runs now. So as it comes in, it'll just keep trying to maintain a speed, uh, depending on how much power the car's making. So we're at about 20 miles an hour per second. Ends up being about a seven second run. And that's where he's starting to make pulls, starting to add, uh, starting to pull that fuel away more and more and more and just starting to make progress like we always do except for this time i get to hang out and watch so if you guys have seen in the other videos most of what i've been doing is roll-on type pulls which is where it's a staged amount of load at a certain speed and now with the ramp run it's speed based over an amount of time so that's what we're doing here uh with it with a car that it seems to work a bit better on this because this VTEC comes in real hard then the dyno grabs more uh you can kind of it kind of lags just a little bit to make up speed but um, that seems to be working pretty well for what he's wanting to do. Nice repeatable uh, runs there, so that's what we're going with. Also, whenever he rolls, so whenever he hits go, it, he has five seconds. It's going to hold the car at that speed when he hits go, and then the run will start. Uh, so it's not just roll into it and go. It actually holds the car back, stabilizes. You guys can hear it kind of depending on how he rolls into it. It'll load the car, stabilize it, and then takes off. pretty good looks I mean 718 and 525 still has good fuel pressure can keep making progress from here that's more boost with the good fuel pressure so it's uh, looking a lot better this time all right so he's realizing that it's got a bunch extra fuel in the lower boost areas now because of where he's at on the higher so he's actually going to kind of detune it and go backwards and smooth out all the areas and kind of rework it and the Holly it uh, does a lot of the learn and he transfer it over he's been kind of working it that way the ECU Masters kind of has a function like that, but he hasn't used it a lot, so he's just learning. We're learning with the dyno, and so it's kind of fun when somebody with a project like this comes along, and we can just sit here and 
make poles and try new things and learn because that's what I haven't done a lot of VE that's all VE based so I'm kind of looking at it with them and we're just trying to you know think through it see what we'd want to do on different things or what it should look like and uh, I even pulled up the Holly software and put a VE tune in it and it screws up the graph all sorts of crazy so see what it does here You guys can kind of hear where the BE table had a bunch of extra fuel there, it kind of it fights through it and then once it cleans up and gets good air fuel, it makes really good power right there. I think that was 734. So he was at like 750 or something at higher boost, but he only had it to where it kind of almost had like a hole in the map. So he's trying to go back and re-smooth the whole map out, fix it. This is what kind of sucks here. Like I told him, it's almost better for him. He could have started over uh, because he was fighting fueling last time. Is grabbing the whole fuel table and subtracting a certain percentage uh, to kind of get back to where he started before the fueling issues because the ECU and the Lambda, everything will start telling you, you got to add exponentially a bunch of fuel. And that's a telltale of when you're running out of fuel. But starting to get it dialed in, I mean, Sounds pretty good, just a few little spots he's got to clean up and then it should make a real nice smooth pull. So he's actually looking through the tables right now. It looks like it's pulling a clear down to like 10 degrees of timing for some reason. Um, and even though it's commanding more than that, there's it's hitting some sort of must be secondary table that's pulling a bunch of timing. That's where it's breaking up. It's like jerking a bunch of timing out of it, which seems weird. So uh, he's trying to figure that out. <laughs> about before that pull is that if he starts running into that like kind of ignition where it's fighting itself is to get out of it and uh, just try to figure that out move past it for whatever reason we're running into this wall here of like an ignition issue all right guys so Trevor got back over here he got the TPS already put in the car new TPS is in so hopefully this fixes our issue so we can go ahead and keep on tuning on it also shout out to Trevor for uh, the new branding well, Harbor Frickett didn't uh, send that sponsorship money, so I had to take that sticker off. First pull made 568. You guys see it pulled a lot smoother there. It doesn't cut in and out real bad, so what a deal that just the TPS sensor coming in and out on him. Uh, gave us that issue. Got a floating Civic. So we're thinking we might be running into like the issue on the Buick where the turbos were tilted or whatever, which that's all been fixed anyway. But you guys will see on a lot of hub dynos that they will actually raise up the front of the car. This being front wheel drive, will raise up the back, get the car level. Uh, maybe it'll be a little bit happier and not trying to push so much oil out of the turbo because the turbo on this is actually already leaned. Uh, and then leaning the car makes it even worse. So. A little bit of a spark issue, huh? Yeah, I think it was blowing it out. Tightened it up a little bit and now it's pulled pretty good then it was a little fat so we pulled some fuel yeah so it's richer now than it was when it made that 780 or whatever yeah. so. so what we're talking about is when it goes up through there it's blowing spark out it's like it's hitting a little ignition cut well if you're ever on a two-step it'll show lean because it's like cutting ignition <laughs> So he ended up turning up the boost more and they started missing again. So he's kind of hitting a wall. Uh, I think it's in the higher 20s, 26, 28 pounds of boost, maybe closer to the 30, where it starts just cutting in and out throughout the whole pool. You can just hear it. So what that is kind of sounding like is an ignition cut, and which could be it blowing out the spark. So maybe where the plugs are gapped and what boost it's making, it's just not happy. So he's going to pull plugs, maybe tighten up the gap and see if that fixes it. 
One good thing about a four cylinder is you only got four plugs to pull. when it made that 780 or whatever yeah. so what we we're talking about is when it goes up through there it's blowing spark out it's like it's hitting a little ignition cut well if you're ever on a two-step it'll show lean because it's like cutting ignition so it probably tried to add so you're looking at it like it's lean but it's really not it's just blowing the spark out so now you just have to go back in and manipulate the fuel there and then dial it back in <laughs> Water all the way over. Oh yeah, it's like everywhere. Yeah. Push all over the computer. Floor. That's crazy. Made a ton of power. What boost was that? That had been quite a pretty high then. Thirty-three. Is forty-seven on the. Yeah, 30, 32, 32, 32. 32. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, thermostat might have failed and shit. Well, hopefully the car's all right. Yeah, I mean. Hopefully. I, it, it's not hurt that bad. I mean, it's it's driving home. It, it has a little bit of a haze to it, but it's not. Uh, and it might not be anything crazy serious. We're yeah. really not sure, but better safe than sorry to not just keep beating on it. You made a crazy good number. Uh, we did have a huge step, which I mean, that is another five or six pounds of boost, and that is more load on that turbo. So, like I said, I'd like to have backed that up, but it kind of does back it up on that previous run. It was trending right along with that. I think I think just the more load you throw at these turbo cars, they're just. It's going to make the steam, yeah. which I guess you could probably overload it and it'll never see that kind of load. But also you've talked about being on other dynos where it yeah. didn't get loaded like it does on the street. So yeah, that's part of learning it, guys. And that this was the first real consistent ramp runs I've done with the dyno. So I'm still we learning. Did, we did a lot of ramp runs. We did a lot I mean, of ramp runs. What was that? 16 runs tonight and we did, what, 20 runs? Yeah. And I mean, there's probably some others where we start stopping at council run yeah. and not really a run. But uh, I mean, you'd still chalk that up to a solid 30 runs. Yeah. over the last couple nights and learning and making I mean, power it, it's still freaking together uh that's basically a stock block on it with a block guard in it so a lot of the guys when they're pushing 800 plus horsepower on these things they're all like a css block which is basically a uh, like a machined in block guard yeah the where they pretty much gut it and then put yeah and then most of those guys too they do like the they either step deck them to where like the deck is just a little bit mm. lower so like the cylinders just have a, a smidge huh. you know so it kind of clamps a little just better everything's or tighter. they or they o-ring them too yeah o-rings so. getting that's full race car style but yeah i mean that's huge power out of it uh, like i said it's one of those things and but that was 34 ish pounds of boost is what we were figuring and, and that's a small turbo too so that's a it's a garrett it's going to make it early yeah so that's a garrett 3582r uh with a 0.82 ar exhaust housing uh, these things make a lot a lot of exhaust when VTEC comes in on this thing it's just it's on like yeah. it makes all the power right there so so yeah that, that turbo is basically rated for like 900 crank you know and this is you know we it's might good. be pushing yeah, a little bit right past there. that you know with uh with the efficiency range but i mean it's still making making all the power and, yeah uh, no it's yeah. pretty pretty crazy build and if you guys don't know trevor does have motion auto tv uh, i know some of his subscribers have jumped over and checked out the video so appreciate you guys as well coming over from trevor's channel but if you want to see more of the civic or all the other crazy things you got going on he uh he likes the four cylinders six cylinders yeah I actually i like the truck build you're doing i like I think the truck that i mean cool. I, I had an ls swapped in my 240 drift car yep. a couple years ago so i mean i've done some ls you did ls stuff. way back stock been, computer stuff i've been wanting to do ls stuff for a while again yeah. but i don't know i'm having a lot of fun with this so well they're that. cheaper not the well, first project not the last project so i guess they're not cheaper if you keep hurting <laughs> yeah yeah he's got a few of these k-series laying around the shop yeah, but they're all uh, stock though we, yeah we, no i mean it's cool to see how far you can push something yeah like i was asking trevor like what if i did something you know what, what would you do and oh you could pretty much make 500 real easy and like I now mean, you kind of know where we, the rods are at and yeah just I mean, everything. We, we made 620 horse on a bone stock literally 200 and some thousand mile case. well the other battery died in the big camera so either way it yeah. made some power. You're going to take it home and check it out. It's going to, yeah, it's, it's going to drive home. We're going to see. I have another head gasket. So maybe that's what it is. Maybe we, maybe we just turn it down so it doesn't, it doesn't do that. Doesn't that's do what anything. we kind of were talking about. Maybe it's just floating the head too. It's just getting enough in there. That's kind of where we're like, don't, don't go send it again and 
yeah. possibly hurt it. Because um, maybe that's as simple as all that it is, retorque the head or new head gasket and send it. Maybe it's not any of that, but yeah. we need to we need to figure that out it's, before we just turn it up more and go send it more. And, I wanted to, I mean, I probably wasn't going to turn it up any more than no, that. No, like yeah. that. I probably just to like, verify, Whoa! like just to re If it would have done that again, that I would have been... Everything. I mean, yeah. we were already close to 900. Like, we could yeah, maybe yeah. Like, get a little something else. <laughs> then, you, but, then you start getting a great, yeah, what, what will 35, 36 pounds do? Yeah. Yeah. Until you I find mean, the that, limit, and then you go from there. That sounds like a party is what that, Yeah, I yeah. Mean, eventually, that's the goal of it. But, uh, you know, I, I kind of had plans of I really only kind of wanted 800, and, you know, it kind of went went past that Got there, quick, but so. you learned a huge amount in just the tuning side of in the ECU master yeah. ECU and everything over the last two nights of being on the dyno. So. Yeah, setting up safety parameters, like watching it go lean and being like, uh oh, you know, and then being able to change that. TPS. And set up the, yeah, TPS stuff. I'm always gonna I'm gonna throw another one of those like in my tool bag. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know that'll wreak havoc on the whole system. So yeah. Again, guys, thanks to Trevor for bringing the uh, car over. I'm sure this isn't the last time he'll be on the dyno. We'll be playing again with something else. So. <laughs> We'll uh, we'll be, see you guys next time. Pretty soon. So. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks again, man. Yeah. See you guys later. See ya.